Hi there, Reality 101, Episode 3. I'm Bren White. Thank you for joining me in this process. A very uh, brief video uh, today, uh, just going back to Episode 1, where uh, we began talking about credible sources, about reliable sources. Now, for anyone who wants to uh, get at the truth, uh, understand what is true and what is a lie, um, any human being who uh, wishes to do this uh, and undertakes it uh, must ask themselves uh, certain questions. And uh, some of those questions always have to do with the source. Uh, probably the most important conversation that you and I could ever have, uh, this way or in person, is about the source, the source of all things, the source of uh, your information uh, going into your brain every day, uh, the source of, um, of, of all good things, the source of um, evil things, uh, harmful and dangerous things. Uh, we know that these things all exist uh, in the world, uh, this temporary uh, world on earth. And um, the documents that exist in the world are the way that we uh, have footing to begin to figure out what is the truth. Uh, how did things happen? Uh, how did we get here? Why are we here? Um, what are we supposed to be doing with our daily living? Um, there are a whole set of questions that actually do begin to get answered when you and I begin to uh, dig into original sources, sources of information, that are not tertiary, that are not uh, hearsay, uh, that are not just talking points uh, uh, echoing uh, uh, through um, technology um, and uh, in the media and the internet. And um, uh, there are so many um, pieces of information, data points, as some people say, that um, I think really uh, most of the time it's, it's noise, it is not useful, it's hard to uh, make practical use of most of the information that comes our way. And the reality is most information that is uh, being propagated on the earth is incorrect. Uh, most of the information that is being pushed through technologies uh, today is uh, in fact not true. And this causes serious problems for human individuals trying to use their brains to decide what to do and how to do it, uh, what to believe and how to operate, uh, how to treat others, how to spend their lives. Um, these things are crucial. And until you and I uh, really identify reliable sources in history um, that have uh, roots uh, coming into today, uh, those sources are the ones that we need to spend uh, our time exploring. Uh, it happens that um, most human beings know that if somebody is known for lying, or is lying constantly for uh, half a century on videotape, that that person is not a reliable source. That person is not to be listened to for one second, not for one second. A reliable source is somebody who has spoken things repeatedly, and they have been true. The result of you and I accepting what was said is then verified, confirmed, and becomes of practical use and has a positive outcome. Now, whenever people go along with lies, 
whenever human beings accept uh, fabrication of lies from other human beings, they end up not only confused, but they end up really uh, in destructive situations, in, in terrible situations. And this happens in history over and over and over, and we have record of this, many different kinds of records. And uh, so the Romans and the Greeks were very good about keeping records, and so were a number of other civilizations. Um, but the best records were actually kept by the Hebrew people, and uh, this is documented fact as well. In fact, what we call the Bible today, uh, that which was um, collected and protected by the Hebrews, um, those uh, documents put together with the documents uh, from the first century, um, which were then confirmed and verified even going into the second century by multiple sources, credible sources, that document, which is called the Bible, the Holy Bible, is actually the most reliable document in the history of the world. There is no other document that comes close. Not one. Not one. Comes even close. No other religious writings. Not even close. Uh, in terms of the historicity, the reliability of the documents involved, uh, there is no comparison whatsoever. And uh, even someone like Julius Caesar, who used um, the government of Rome and uh, all of those funds uh, that were coming in, he used it to promote himself in a book called The Gallic Wars, uh, which has to do with how uh, he conquered uh, France, Gaul. And... Um, and he uh, spent a lot of energy and time uh, promoting uh, that manuscript uh, that would leave him a lasting legacy in history. And it ends up that the ancient manuscripts that exist connected to his original writing, which he did massive promotion for, uh, only um, has a hundred manuscripts in existence to verify that Julius Caesar was in any way involved in writing that. Now, a hundred manuscripts uh, is not very many, and it's, this is one of the best examples of a reliable document. Uh, the Bible actually has over 6,000 manuscripts, ancient manuscripts, that are corroborated in so many different ways uh, over thousands of years. And it happens that, uh, in particular, uh, we know in the first century, uh, in that uh, Greek world, that all of those documents that were uh, written, um, for instance, by Dr. Luke, who was a well-known doctor, uh, and by the Apostle Paul, who was uh, a brilliant, um, really lawyer, Pharisee, uh, among uh, the Jewish people, uh, they were probably the brightest minds in that time period. And, um, and all of those people that they were interacting with in the first century, around that time of Jesus Christ and afterwards, uh, there were eyewitnesses. Now, this is uh, also part of uh, reliability. It happened that among the Jewish people, if you did not have at least three witnesses, eyewitnesses, um, you couldn't verify anything. It was just hearsay. At least three witnesses. Well, it happens that thousands there were thousands and thousands of eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ when he was on the earth. Uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ after he was resurrected from the dead. 
this is all for the benefit of human beings to know that he was God in the flesh. He was the God-man. He came in order to show us how to live and to reconnect us with this source of life and the source of eternal life, the same source, the source of truth. And Jesus Christ taught very clearly that those people who follow him will indeed be free. They will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. He also is very, very clear in his teaching about uh, the fact that he holds uh, the power over life and death. He holds eternal life in his hand. And in fact, the Apostle Paul clearly teaches to the Ephesians that Jesus Christ is currently reigning over all things in the world, and he actually holds everything, including the universe, everything in place by his power, actively. So um, you have to have eyewitnesses for it to be accurate, otherwise it's just hearsay. You have hundreds and thousands of eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ and the words that he spoke. The words that he spoke, he actually said, these were from a source, the Father. God himself, he sourced every word he said, and every word he said had been collected and protected in what we call the Old Testament today. In all of those writings in the Old Testament that are thousands of years old now, he was speaking those words that were captured in history among human beings and he was explaining what those words mean. Now, this is the most amazing and beautiful thing that could possibly ever happen in the history of mankind. Uh, you and I can receive documentation, verifiable information uh, and instruction from the very source of our life. This is truly, truly awesome. Uh, this is great news. This is great news. In any case, uh, every single time you and I want to get at the truth, we have to ask ourselves questions like this. Otherwise, we will spin our wheels. We will never really be able to ascertain whether something is true or a lie. Um, and that is no way to live. You will waste your life if you do not figure out what the truth is. Um, and you can't just go along with a bunch of other people who happen to be in your grouping or subgrouping. Uh, that's, that's not the answer. Um, so you have to ask yourself, um, where did this message come from? What is the source? Who is the source? What is the character, the behavior pattern, the reliability of this person who is the source? Because every human being, every thinking human being knows, knows that you do not trust just anyone. And you definitely don't trust people who are known for lying or for cheating or for scamming people. You do not uh, accept what they're saying. You don't listen to what they're saying, or you will be harmed. Uh, this is something that most humans uh, learn over time, but humans can always be tricked. And uh, this is one of the reasons why Jesus uh, really uh, said some interesting things to the Jewish leaders of that time in the first century. He, he warned them about uh, the blind leading the blind. Now, this is a popular saying uh, throughout many generations. The blind leading the blind. This is, this is what Jesus Christ said. It's, it has its source with Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, this is another way you can tell if something's true. It lasts. It lasts. It, it actually is found true over and over and over throughout generations. Um, 
But in any case, this is part of the problem with human beings on the earth is a lot of times they uh, just are going along with each other and nobody is really seeking the truth. And, and they're leading each other, uh, blind leading the blind. And Jesus says, into a pit. Uh, the blind leading the blind, they always end up in a pit. You're, you're not going to go somewhere uh, <laughs> that is a good destination uh, if uh, the blind are, are leading the blind. Now, he's talking about this spiritually in particular. But he's making a point, and most human beings throughout history have understood that this is true. Um, so where did the message come from? Where did the information originate? Crucial, crucial. If it originated with some people who are always scamming, who are always lying, you know, who, who really want to do some things that are evil, uh, you cannot listen to it. Okay, unless you just want to damage yourself and damage your loved ones. Who did it come from? Um, the other thing has to be asked is uh, which document was so reliable throughout history, so reliable that it was used as the foundation for all modern archaeology? It happens to be the Holy Bible. Without the Holy Bible, the first modern archaeologists would have never known where to begin. They wouldn't even know the questions to ask. They wouldn't know where to dig. They wouldn't know what they were digging for. Um, and that is the beginning of modern archaeology. There's no other beginning. Um, it started with that. And those people, even if they weren't ardent Christians, they used the document that was historical in order to decide what might have been there in the past because they, they knew that it was true. And it happens that all of the information in the Bible, whether it's geography, whether it is weather, uh, whether it has to do with uh, boating, shipping, fishing, uh, whether it has to do with uh, uh, anything related to the history of mankind, it is verifiable. It's been verified in many, many ways, unlike any other document on the face of the earth. And, uh, and it happened that there were a number of archaeologists who, who actually questioned the Bible's veracity, and they dug and they followed the instructions that were in the Bible of what was in that place and how it operated and who was there, and once they started digging, they found out. They discovered for themselves with their dirty hands uh, and all their workers. They found out that what the Bible was saying was 100% true, even though they were skeptical. Uh, this is true for like the Hittites uh, and a bunch of other groupings of people. They, there were archaeologists who thought, oh, this stuff is made up. And then they started digging according to what the Bible said. And they, many of them, were converted to Christianity because the Bible was correct, absolutely correct about history, geography, uh, everything that was happening in the time period, uh, the kings, the rulers, um, the famines, everything was correct. So uh, these are things that uh, are very, very important. And it's one of the reasons why I actually am very comfortable talking about the Bible and things written in the Bible because it is the most historistic, reliable document on the face of the earth. Hands down, there's nothing close, nothing close. And uh, you need to look into this uh, a little bit more. You need to really verify some things for yourselves, uh, but, but make sure that you're asking the right questions. Make sure that you're not reading um, some scholars and experts uh, who really are using bad sources themselves and have some kind of, uh, I would say, blindedness, um, some kinds of uh, biases that uh, don't allow them to actually see history for exactly what it is. Um, all these things are important. Uh, consistency and reliability the, uh, in terms of the person, 
from whence this came, who wrote these things, uh, who is the originator of those words. Uh, very, very crucial. Um, someone who speaks the truth consistency uh, with consistency should be listened to. Someone who does not speak the truth consistently but actually lies, <laughs> makes up stuff constantly, uh, they should not be listened to. And there is only one, one person who actually speaks the truth with 100% consistency throughout history, and that is the maker and sustainer of all things. God. Now, you and I need to dig in and really find out uh, these things that I've been talking about, because otherwise, we will not ever really know the truth. The truth is very practical, by the way, and uh, in coming uh, episodes, I will share with you uh, practical truths that are totally inescapable by human beings. They are true. They're true. And it happens that they come from the mouth of the one who made all things, the one who actually made you. Come directly from him, straight from him. And it just happens that in every generation, what he said is true. And what he said actually has a positive outcome when you and I do it. Very interesting, very important for you and I every single day. Okay, next time we're on to other things. God bless you. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.